Well, it's another overcast day here. It seems like we've been having a lot of this overcast, rainy weather. The rain has ended. Um, sun should come out uh, in a little bit. I wanted to show you our rain harvesting system. And these are our tanks down here. So I've got uh, two 1,500 gallon tanks, which we feed from rainwater off the entire roof of our home. We do have a metal roof on the house, um, so we do feel safe collecting the water off of that. And we use this for irrigating all of our gardens. So we've made some modifications over the years. It's gotten uh, more efficient for us. Uh, I do have these tanks filled right now. We turned them on probably a couple weeks ago, allowed them to fill. I wasn't worried about a hard freeze, but we could get some frost um, still for probably a couple weeks. I'm not worried about the pump freezing at this point. I think we're in the clear. So let me give you a little uh, more closer look at uh, what we've got going on. So these are where the pipes come out of the ground. Our top pipe goes to our rainwater collection. The bottom pipe is our curtain drains on the house. So that just goes uh, back out and drains further down the hill. This top water collection pipe goes into this elbow here and into our tank. This is where we have our filter. You can see it's a little dirty. Clean that out. But this filter is nothing but uh, some hardware cloth with some screening wrapped around it. So we have a plumber's plug uh, installed down here and that blocks this lower pipe here, which is just our drain. If we want to stop the flow of rainwater in the winter time, we take that plug out, we'll install it in this pipe here and that'll block water from going into the pipe and allows it to just go down the drain. From here, we can simply take our filter, slide that in, and then we have a cap for the top. That simple filter setup works very well for us because we have no trees around our house. We don't get a lot of debris that comes down into here. I'll clean that out um, after a good rainstorm. But um, the water in these tanks stays pretty clean. I will clean them out uh, either in the fall once we drain them for winter or first thing in the spring uh, before we start collecting new water. And that's not a very difficult process. Um, each of our um, tanks here does have a manhole cover up top so uh, we can just take that cover off um, and we can get down inside there. I don't even actually go inside there. I'll take it, I'll use a pump to pump any residual water out of the tank. And then I will um, actually use a piece of PVC pipe on a shop vac and suck any debris off of the bottom of the tank. So both of my tanks have a shutoff valve. Uh, got one located here. Got a second one located over here. And then I have a drain valve, so if we're going to drain these tanks, I can open these valves. I can open this valve, drain everything out through a uh, drain that we have in the ground that will go out uh, into the back part of the hill here. Um, the nice thing is I can shut one of these tanks off if I want to. I can close that tank off and just run on this tank or vice versa, uh, depending on uh, how the situation dictates. But most of the time we just leave them on both tanks. And they'll both drop equally then if we have both tanks set on at the same time. Right, Aussie? Yes. This is our pump house. Uh, we put this in to keep the uh, pump nice and uh, weatherproof. The top simply lifts off. It's a little heavy. And our pump will go in here. So we're going to grab that pump now. We're going to get that installed. Get this plumbed into our main system. Get it turned on. And flush all the lines. So here's our pump, uh, 110 volt pump. We have 110 volt run down to that uh, pump house. Uh, it's got a pressure switch in here so we can leave this on and it pressurizes it just like your regular household water would be uh, and it's all automatic. We take this off in the uh, fall because we don't want this pump to freeze over winter.
water connections are made pretty easy with these couplings. Get these at Home Depot or Lowe's or any plumbing place. The same on top and bottom. And our electrical pops through here. And that'll go to our outlet once we're ready to hook up power. One thing I want to show you, we made a little pre-filter. And that filter probably needs to be clean, so we're going to take that out of here and clean it. So I made this filter just by cutting two pieces of PVC pipe, the same inch, just two inch pipe, uh, the same size, and I took some uh, window screen, stainless steel window screening, and just glued it between the two pieces. So it made a nice uh, pre-filtering screen so that uh, anything that might come through the tanks, and we generally don't have that much problem, uh, will get stuck in this filter. But I'm gonna rinse this out, uh, put it back in. It's actually pretty clean, it's just a little dirty water in there, but. We'll put it back in there and then we'll get ready to hook up our uh, water line uh, for the input to the pump, turn our tanks on, we'll bleed the pump, and we'll be in business. Good as new. So this filter gets held in by these two pieces of pipe. It gets sandwiched in between and then our fern co uh, connects everything together. Okay, I'm going to get my um, feed line into my water system hooked up. Two male ends, so an adapter. Tanks are already turned on. We're going to bleed the pump now, so we have to open our drain screws. You can hear it filling. Turn our supply on. So I'm going to go to my highest valve. I'm going to open that up, let all our upstream air out of the system. Then we'll go down to our downstream valve, we'll let all that air out of the system, and the pump should pressurize and shut off. So our water lines start here. We go uphill to these gardens here. We have our two upper gardens. We have a valve right up in this area. I'm going to bypass this. We're going to go right to the top. We go into our main garden area here. We got Deb's doing some weeding. We're going to open this top valve. 
Let the air out. Let's see. We'll wait till we don't hear any more air. This is our next valve. Since we let the air out of the top, there shouldn't be much air in here. Moving downhill. So our final valve is down here at our greenhouse or our high tunnel. So once the growing season gets going, we have the garden up top planted. Uh, we will use splitters like you see here and we will use um, timers uh, like this one here uh, to water everything. It makes it a lot easier for us. We can just set it and kind of walk away and do other chores. But right now we're ready to give this one a test, so we're going to turn the water on. Open our valve. Kick that timer on. And I can hear the sprinklers going. Still a little air in the system, but that'll work its way out. Well, the sun has finally come out. It is warming up. I think I'm gonna kind of ditch this sweatshirt uh, and we're gonna start working on some other projects. I think I'm gonna get the turkeys out of the brooder that is uh, up in our workshop, get them into the mobile brooder so we can start moving them in and outside, get them accustomed to the outdoors, and hopefully have them out on grass in about two weeks. At that point, we're gonna move the chickens out of their brooder, put them in the mobile brooder and do the same type of process. Um, it feels really good to have this uh, rainwater hooked up now so that we can water all the crops uh, that we have growing in our high tunnel using strictly the rainwater and not have to be dragging the hose around the yard anymore. If you have a question on how we harvest our rainwater or how the system works, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you like today's video, hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we certainly would appreciate you subscribing to our channel. Um, so I think the next video you'll probably see us post is on uh, moving those turkeys out into the uh, mobile brooder and uh, then we have a uh, build that we um, are working on right now on a new chicken tractor so that will be posted probably shortly after that. We certainly appreciate you coming and spending some time with us here on the farm. Well, like always, until next time, we hope all your days are sunny side up. <laughs>